Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, this lesson is going to be on molecular shape and Vesper theory. Vesper theory is the idea that if atoms are made out of ele electron clouds, that they repel each other. So if you have a molecule where the central atom is bonded to three things, those three atoms have clouds that repel each other. So they want to be as far apart from each other as possible. So these are the ideal, you know, the ideal um, shapes and geometries that we see to minimize those repulsions between the bonding groups. So let's start with hybridization. Last time we talked about sp3, sp2, and sp. sp3 you should associate with four sp3 orbitals. So that's going to le lead you to something that looks like, like this. And this is what we call tetrahedral. The steric number for this is the number of atoms that are bonded to the center. So you see one, two, three, four atoms attached to the center. So the steric number is four. Now the electron geometry is going to be one, two, three, four. That, that's where tetrahedral comes from, is the uh, prefix tetra for four. So tetrahedral. <clears throat> now these on paper, we sometimes draw, you know, carbon with four bonds, and it looks like 90 degrees, but remember we're taking advantage of 3D space, so everything spreads out, and we end up with a bond angle that's um, greater than 90 degrees. It's 109.5, so it's a good number to remember for the bond angle between the hydrogen, the carbon, and the hydrogen. All right, now, molecules can have steric number of four, um, but they can have different combinations of lone pairs or atoms. So for example, if I, instead of an atom, I had a lone pair, then this is still considered a steric number of four. But with having a lone pair here, it takes on a different shape. The geometry is still considered tetrahedral because steric number of four. But the shape is what we visually picture. And in this case, we picture a pyramid. A trigonal pyramid because as a three three atom base but it's a pyramid so you can have three different shapes with tetrahedral tetrahedral you can have no lone pairs so you have all four atoms that's just called tetrahedral shape and then you can also have um, the lone pair on one side so that's a pyramid or trigonal pyramidal okay sorry it's a bit messy um, and then if you have two lone pairs Okay, so here and here, then you have what we call bent. But remember, the lone pairs on the center are also electron clouds, and the atoms are, so they all count as steric number four. So they're all geometry is, all of their geometry is tetrahedral. All right, next is sp2. If you remember, that occurs as a set of three sp2 orbitals. So here's an example of that. This central atom has sp3, or sorry, sp2, sp2, and sp2, and then an unhybridized p orbital above and below, okay? So this is going to be a circle is 360, so this is 120. This is a steric number of 1, 2, 3 bonding groups, so 3, and that's where we get <clears throat> trigonal, try for 3, trigonal, planar. All right, so now the possible geometries for this are, well, you can always have the shape that's the same as the geometry. So I can have, let me zoom in to write better here. <laughs> okay, trigonal, planar, that, I guess that didn't help. <clears throat> and then if you have one of these as a lone pair, then you could have a bent shape. Okay, so see the bent shape there? One, two, three. And the lone pair is still there, pushing these two groups into a bent shape rather than linear. So this is going to be also a possible shape. All right, so the last thing is sp. So sp orbitals occur as a set of two. And you have a sigma bond with the sp overlapping with an sp orbital from the oxygen here. You have like a central atom here with an sp this way, and this one has an sp that way, and they overlap. And then in addition to that, since you only have two sp orbitals, you have two p orbitals that were not hybridized. And so those are the basis for forming pi bonds. And those pi bonds are this, you know, this way, and then this one is 90 degrees that way. So it's like that. These are the pi bonds are where my hands are, okay? So 
look at the shape here. I have two bonding groups, so forget about the pi bonds and everything. I just have two bonding groups, no lone pairs on the center. So it's a steric number of two. So if you're not sure again what steric number is, number of bonds and the lone pairs on the center, central atom. And the geometry for this, you can see it's a straight line, so it's what we call linear. And linear geometry has only one possible shape, which is also linear. All right, so let's apply some of this down here. These are examples, so here's NH3, even though this looks like 90 degrees, it's not. You have to think of it in terms of 3D. So that means I'm looking at this NH3 group and I'm saying to myself, oh, uh, I've got <clears throat> one, two, three, four, um, a steric number of four, three atoms and one lone pair on the center, so that's four. So that's why it's about 109.5. Um, here I'm seeing one, two, and then, might get confused here, but this is still one atom. So even though you see two bonds, this is considered one big thing, one big electron cloud. So consider it to be three as a steric number. All right, and so that's trigonal planar geometry. And then for this one, you have this one and that one. So you've got a steric number of two. And so it's all in reference to the central atom. So two things attached. So it's going to be a far, as far apart from each other as possible. So that's 180 degrees. All right, so that's what we call linear geometry and the linear shape. So now here's some practice with that and sort of looking at different kinds of molecules and trying to determine their um, bond angle, steric number, all that. So let me see if you guys can figure out um, how to fill in this chart. And maybe we'll just do one as an example. CO2, I'm looking at the central atom to figure out the steric number. The steric number is going to be one, two. Two bonding atoms and no lone pairs Steric number is 2. Bond angle then is for these to be spread out, it's linear. Electron geometry is linear. Molecular shape is linear, right? Oops, sorry. Bond angle is uh, an, an angle, it's a number. 180, there we go, 180 degrees. Hybridization of this carbon, sp. And I can tell because there's only two sigma bonds and two pi bonds. Okay, so go ahead and give these a try and let's come back and check our answers. Okay, everyone, now we're back. Um, notice that you can approach this depending on your strength because it's all related. Either you know the hybridization really well and then you need to work on the shape and the steric number and the bond angles. So if you know this is SP, from there you can just know SP is always linear and linear is always 180 degrees. Okay. Or you can say, well, I know the shapes and geometry is better than the hybridization. So you can say, well, I know this is trigonal planar. Um, so from there, you can say, well, whenever it's trigonal planar, it's sp2. So it's up to you which direction you want to approach this from. Here are the answers I got. One thing I want to point out is that for these two, I put about 109.5. But for this one, I put 109.5. And so we'll see why I did that on the next page. But again, something I want to point out real quick, linear SP, trigonal planar SP2, uh, tetrahedral geometry SP3. Okay, so that's the basic part. And then from there, then worry about the bond angle, then worry about the shape. But the, the core thing is the hybridization, the geometry, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're looking at bond angles that are actually not exactly 109.5 but they are slightly less than it. So here's water and here's ammonia. Uh, it turns out that ammonia is actually around 107.5 and water is around 104.5 for this bond angle right there. <clears throat> so now let's compare that to methane, CH4. Okay, so remember it looks sort of like this and this is 109.5. Nope. All right, so if this is 109.5, and then we have this, what's the difference between these two? Okay, it's the nitrogen and the carbon, but it's also the fact that there is not a hydrogen up here, right? There's a lone pair. 
And then let's look at the difference between this and that. Okay, so again, this, this difference of a lone pair. So what's going on here is that the lone pairs are taking up space. So this lone pair is taking up more space than this atom might take up. And that's causing um, these atoms here to get pushed down, and those bond angles as a result get smaller. If you have two lone pairs, that takes up even more space, so the atoms underneath get pushed together even more. All right, so it's due to the electron repulsion. Uh, it's due to the lone pairs, which have a greater electron repulsion. resulting in the bond angle getting decreased. Okay. So very similar um, reason for why formaldehyde shows that the bond angles are different from here versus here. Can you predict which one is smaller and why? Now there's a couple of uh, things that you might say. Um, maybe you'll say the pi electrons make this, you know, sort of a bigger region of cloud. Um, but you could also say it's the lone pairs here. So these lone pairs have an effect on repelling, even though they seem once removed, right? So it's not on the carbon, but it's on the oxygen on the carbon. Those lone pairs can still have an influence on the neighboring hydrogens. So they're they're, they're spreading out and they're pushing the hydrogens closer to each other. All right, so the smaller bond angle should be this one, the CHC, or sorry, HCH bond angle should be less than the HCO angle. <coughs> and uh, then you can explain with the repulsion due to the lone pair. What is similar between bent trigonal pyramidal and uh, tetrahedral molecular shapes? So if we look back to here, the different molecular shapes here, what's different about these is probably, you can see the lone pair is what's different. So it changes what we see. And when I look at water, I see something that's bent. That's because the lone pairs are up here. And so they're sort of invisible to me, but they're still acting on those hydrogens. So here's a lone pair there, and then there's no lone pair here. So those that lone pair is really what's going to be different about them. What's similar about them is that they have the same electron geometry. So let's see. Same electron geometry, which is what? Tetrahedral. Okay, sorry for my bad writing. <laughs> it's just, it's, I'm so, so tired right now. What is the difference about them? So it's uh, about the lone pairs. So the number of lone pairs. Okay. Does it have anything to do with what they're called? Um, well, I think the name of the molecular shapes are trying to describe what these look like in 3D. Okay. Identify the hybridization bond angle and electron geometry and molecular shape for each of these central atoms. So here's what I um, recommend. You know, even though water is sometimes drawn bent, sometimes we just draw it straight, but it doesn't mean it's straight. Let's take a look at water, okay? Water is bent, right? But sometimes if you look at it from a different angle, it might actually look like a straight line, just depending on how you rotate it, right? So it's not actually incorrect to draw water so that it looks linear, but we don't call it linear. We have to look at the molecule as a whole, right? We have to look at it from different perspectives and say, oh, it's definitely not linear if you're looking at it this way. So we go with bent, okay? So um, the point I'm trying to make is just because I draw a molecule that's bent doesn't mean it is bent. It might be linear. So just keep that in mind. It goes both ways. Don't go by what you see on the paper. Go by your analysis. Okay, look at the hybridization. Look at the bond angles. Look at the geometry. Try to figure out for yourself what the shape is. Let's do one as an example. So the central atom A 
is next to this oxygen here. So that's what I'm referring to as A. The hybridization of this oxygen, well, first I recommend you always keep in mind there's lone pairs or hydrogens that might not be drawn in or, you know, just right here it's obvious all the hydrogens are provided. So the thing is though, it's missing a lone pair. So that's really critical in thinking of what hybridization this is. Take a look at oxygen. It's got one, two, three, four, steric number of four. So you could say it's sp3. Another way about this is you could say, oh, there's three sigma bonds, but potentially four sigma bonds because of the lone pair. So four sigma bonds is sp3, right? Four sp3 orbitals are used. So the bond angle for sp3 is 109.5. However, look at the lone pair here. Remember, what's that going to do to that bond angle? This bond angle is going to decrease a little bit. So you can write less than 109.5, or you can write 107.5, which is the value we get for approximately one lone pair, just like on ammonia here. OK, so uh, now the electron geometry for this is based on hybridization. So if it's sp3, it's tetrahedral. And then its shape depends on whether this lone pairs or not. There's a lone pair here. So even though it's tetrahedral, it's got a lone pair, so it's going to have a different shape. So I'm going to have tetrahedral as a geometry, but one of them is a lone pair. So I only see this part down here. This is my pyramid. Okay, so this is a shape-wise. It is a trigonal pyramid or pyramidal. Okay, either way is fine. All right. Good. So I was telling my class today, bond angle. Um, I would like you to know whether it would be less than 109.5, um, but uh, it would be really great if you knew the difference between 107.5 and 104.5. So just um, based on the question, I'll give you options. You know, what bond angle is it? Um, and then you choose the best answer. Okay.